This video is sponsored by Coursera. How did I get here? I don't mean here, I mean here. How did someone born and raised in London, England become a BI consultant YouTuber in the south of France? Let me explain. Hello and welcome to Learn BI Online with me, Adam Finer, helping you do more with data. So I've been a BI consultant with a YouTube channel for just over six years now. And apart from mentioning my career journey briefly on a couple of videos, I haven't actually talked in any great detail about how I actually became a BI consultant. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you the story of how I got to where I am today to perhaps give you some inspiration if you too are considering starting or transitioning to a new career, maybe even in business intelligence. So this is a story in three parts, a beginning, middle and end, if you like. Along the way, I'll talk about the role each part played in my eventually becoming a BI consultant, the skills I acquired and the tools I learned that led me here. Let's start, like with any good story, at the beginning. So I started my working career in market research, first as a telephone interviewer, calling random people and asking if they wouldn't mind sparing a few minutes to answer a bunch of questions about their opinion of some brand or other. Then I moved on, staying in market research to set up my first business, doing coding. But not the kind of coding that might immediately spring to your mind. No, this coding turned verbatim text answers to survey questions into numeric data that could then be entered and aggregated. From coding, I moved on again, again staying in market research, to data processing and survey analysis. For this job, I was writing code using an application that would take raw survey data and turn it into hundreds, if not thousands, of pages of cross tabulations that broke down responses to survey questions by things like age, gender, household income, etc. To say it wasn't very exciting stuff would be a huge understatement. I've always been someone quite creative and was already writing and recording my own music for many years by that point. I actually released an album back in 2006 that you can still listen to on Spotify. I'm not going to give you the name of the artist or the album, but if you're the first person to find it and link to it in the comments, I'll send you a free Learn BI online t-shirt. How about that? Okay, back to the video. So I was working for the family business that my dad had set up back in 1979. I actually wanted to become a lawyer, but when my dad got diagnosed with Alzheimer's at the age of just 50 and was no longer able to work, I decided that I would join the business where my older brother already worked. Fast forward several years and I was making good money, living in a nice apartment that I'd bought in a nice neighbourhood in London, driving a nice car, everything looked great. The only thing was that I hated my job. It was a bad fit for me and every day seemed like it was eating away at my soul. So seven years later in 2009, I made a big decision. I decided to quit my job, fill up my car with a few belongings and drive down to the south of France to take a sabbatical. That may sound quite random, but it's actually not as random as all that because my parents were already spending most of their time living down here in a holiday home they'd had since the mid eighties. Anyway, that was in a tiny village in the south of France, and I wasn't going down to live in a village like a retiree. Instead, I rented an apartment in a larger town about 30 minutes drive away. Finally, I was free. I had loads of amazing ideas for what I was going to do next, like penning a screenplay, writing, recording and performing music, anything that brushed away the cobwebs of the previous several years. So. Do you think I managed to achieve any of that? Well, actually, I kind of did. I played a lot of gigs around town, but I only played covers, not my own music, and I never did get around to writing that screenplay. Eventually, after two years of creative pursuits, shall we say, I ran out of money. And I mean completely ran out. I had nothing. Luckily, I was by then living in an apartment owned by a friend's parents, who were kind enough to wait until I found a new source of income to pay the rent. But things were pretty bleak, especially as my dad eventually succumbed to Alzheimer's at around that same time. 
I needed to find a solution to my financial situation quickly. But what skills did I have? And what kind of job could I get with those skills in the south of France? So I was English but spoke completely fluent French. I'd worked and built reports with data and I'd run a small business with my brother. There wasn't going to be much in the way of job opportunities with those skills in a town with a population of just 50,000. And I didn't really want to work with data anymore. Or at least so I thought. It just so happened that an English friend of mine had found a job in sales for a new tech startup in Montpellier, about an hour's train ride away. They were looking to hire more sales staff. Even though I had no great desire to work in sales, beggars can't be choosers. So I went for a chat with the founders and started work the following week. Oh, I forgot to mention one important thing. The tech startup in question was in software, specifically a cloud-based SaaS BI tool. At that time, Tableau was the major player in the self-service BI space, but that was on-premise only. Our tool, called BIME, was 100% built in the cloud, making it very innovative indeed for the time. In terms of my skills, they were actually pretty well suited to the job. BI is all about data, they were doing lead prospection in mainly English-speaking countries, and there were only seven or eight people working at the company. Small team. Perfect. Except for one small thing. After a couple of months, it soon became clear that I was sh at sales. But what I was good at was using the tool to analyze data and build interactive dashboards. So when they said they were looking for someone to onboard and train new clients and handle technical questions, I jumped at the chance, stopped doing sales and became a technical services consultant. And that was the start of my career in business intelligence. But where did I go from there? Well, that's the middle part of my story. So there I was. I got lucky, essentially. I was working for a really young and dynamic BI startup in the south of France, part of a small team trying to grow the business and make it successful. I was really happy with my role as I was fairly autonomous, which suited me. My job saw me wearing three different but related hats. First, I was running a training program to onboard new clients. Second, I was working as a solutions consultant. So I would meet with clients who would present to me their data and the BI projects they wanted to implement with our tool. Doing this, I got to see hundreds of projects with companies of all different sizes and in every industry imaginable. It basically gave me a global perspective on the burgeoning growth of business intelligence and how companies all over the world were implementing it. And my third hat was that of project manager and consultant. Some clients wanted to implement BI but didn't want to do it themselves. Instead, they'd ask us to do it. So I would project manage gather the information, agree on a project brief, and then go ahead and deliver the project. Now, when I started managing projects, it's fair to say that I had no idea what I was doing. I was winging it. This wasn't so noticeable when we were smaller and our client list was less impressive, shall we say. But as we grew, the caliber of our clients grew, the stakes got higher, and my somewhat amateur approach became more apparent which is when they decided to send me on a project management course that totally transformed the way I worked from that point on. What I learned in that course has stayed with me and been invaluable ever since in my job as a consultant. I would highly recommend anyone working client side to study project management, which actually brings me very nicely onto the Google Project Management Professional Certificate available via the sponsor of today's video, Coursera. The Google Project Management Professional Certificate is a fantastic program that's designed to teach you all of the essential skills you'll need to be job ready in just six months with no prior experience. The program includes over 140 hours of instruction and hundreds of practice-based assessments to simulate real-world project management scenarios that are critical for success in the workplace. 
also helping you to prepare for Project Management Institute certifications like the globally recognized Certified Associate in Project Management. With this program, you'll gain an immersive understanding of the practices and skills needed to succeed in an entry-level project management role. You'll learn how to create effective project documentation, the foundations of agile project management, as well as things like strategic communication, problem solving, and stakeholder management. What's great about this program, other than the fact that it's designed and taught by Google, is that it's online and 100% self-paced. Dedicating just 10 hours a week, you'll be job ready in just six months. Start your path to a career in project management today and sign up to enroll for a seven-day free trial of the Google Project Management Professional Certificate using the link in the description. After the trial, you'll pay just $49 per month. Really great value. Thanks, Coursera. So fast forward a few years and we'd gone from around eight employees to around 40 split between our office in France and another they'd opened in the US. Things were buzzing. And then one day in 2014, we were approached by a company in the US that loved our tool so much that they offered us $45 million for it. As you can imagine, this was pretty exciting news and gave everyone a huge boost. The company in question, Zendesk. They wanted to incorporate our technology into their suite of products while keeping BIM, the original tool, as its own standalone entity. So things as far as I was concerned weren't going to change, except that I would be working with even bigger clients and more of them. At least that's what I was told. The reality, however, was a little different, as is the case in many acquisitions. The real intention was to eventually close down BIM once the tech had been incorporated and transformed into something called Zendesk Explore. And from the very beginning of the acquisition, it became clear that Zendesk had no real interest in developing the professional services side of BIM that I was essentially in charge of. So instead of feeling great about the acquisition and the generous stock options I received, I felt pretty deflated and had a decision to make. I decided to leave to set up as a BI consultant. But that's not actually the end of the middle of this story. When I told Zendesk I wanted to leave, which meant taking my expertise of buying with me, I quickly got offered an all expenses paid mission to their head office in San Francisco. Flights, lovely downtown apartment, food and travel, all taken care of. As I sat there on the rooftop terrace of my apartment building overlooking downtown San Francisco, I thought I'd finally made it. I'd gone from being broke in the south of France with no job and no real prospects to earning a six-figure package living all expenses paid in San Francisco in just under five years. But after three months, I'd had enough. Don't get me wrong, there were a couple of highlights. However, the cons eventually outweighed the pros and it became clear that I was being placated and mothballed, for want of a better word, for once Zendesk Explore was up and running. No one even knew when that was going to be, so that made my decision much easier. I quit and hopped on a plane back to France. After another month, I was fully out and once again unemployed, but I knew exactly what I wanted to do. The knowledge I'd gained working with so many different clients on hundreds of different projects meant I was ideally placed to become a BI consultant. Plus, I still had a fairly good relationship with Zendesk and they were more than happy to send clients needing project management my way. So not such a precarious position after all, though I was setting out alone on a brand new journey and stage of my career at the age of 40. But the prospect was very exciting to me in fact. And there ends the middle part of my story. So this final part of my journey to where I am today starts with me creating Vitamin BI, a business intelligence consultancy in the south of France with six years of experience in the industry behind me. I transformed one of the bedrooms of our apartment into a home office and got to work. I had a steady stream of clients keeping me busy, which was great, but I also knew that I wanted to try out YouTube. Before that time, I'd never really watched it that much, but the more I did, the more I fell in love with it as a medium. I started to recognize the potential the platform had and how it was going to revolutionize the way people consumed video content in a kind of post-regular TV world. So I invested in some video equipment, a camera, some lights and accessories like a tripod. 
I watched as much YouTube as I possibly could on how to create video content and build a YouTube channel. I wanted to create content that introduced people to business intelligence. BI for beginners and beyond was the tagline. And I looked around on YouTube and saw there weren't many channels dedicated to BI, especially for beginners. So I saw a niche I could enter as an expert and stand out from the crowd. So I wrote, recorded, edited and posted a total of eight videos over January and February of 2018 and sat back to see how they would be received. And to my surprise, no one watched them. Literally no one, at least for the first six months or so. Disheartened and having other projects to work on to pay the bills, I decided to temporarily give up on YouTube, at least the Vitamin BI channel. But as is the case with the majority of channels, they take a while to get going. Mine didn't take off or go viral, but I was starting to get over 50 views a day, which then turned into 100, then 200, and so on and so on. Until I decided that it might be something worth pursuing after all. So I posted four more videos over September and October 2020. One of those videos really took off and to be honest, I haven't looked back since. Now, I am passionate about BI, teaching and making videos. So this YouTube channel has always been very fulfilling for me on a personal level, but it has also helped me professionally. My videos have reached and helped hundreds of thousands of people, but they've also brought me new clients as well. People who are looking for a BI professional to help them with their projects. For me, it's a win-win. I guess the final part of the end part of the story is Learn BI Online, which is the name I changed the Vitamin BI channel to in January of 2022, four whole years after I started. It made more sense because I felt Vitamin BI didn't really mean anything to anyone other than me. But I also wanted to go further than just YouTube, so I set up the website at learnbi.online, where people can also find my content. The final part of the jigsaw for me was that I wanted to create an online training program to educate and turn people into certified BI analysts, which is why I created the BI Career Starter Program. It's a program designed to take you from zero to BI analyst in just 12 weeks. If you'd like to learn more, just click here. And remember, if you're interested in getting certified in project management, do check out the Google Project Management Professional Certificate via the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon for another video. Until then, bye.